Yo, uh, welcome to chapter fucking 11, Space Aliens Hide My Drugs. I'm, I'm half naked C.J. Parker. Uh, yeah, you don't want to look down there, I, I guarantee I'm fucking to you. Anyway, you know, every, everybody ever been, used a fucking webcam wants to be a goddamn director, and I was going to film this in natural light, it'd be an early morning, but. But actually, most of the light comes from the, the computer screen. So I guess the computer screen is like the new moon in our lives. You know, everybody knows the new moon makes you crazy. I've developed a theory that a full screen makes you crazy. Look at that light. Look at that. You're real just, I can't block it out for you, can I? But anyway, there's, there's a light of fucking day, which is uh, kind of appropriate. The new light of the day, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna share some fucking things with you. Might throw a little new light on some situations. <clears throat> and for my personal experience, is really what all you fucking got. I mean, I mean everybody, all, all of, all, you know, we the fucking sheep. Why are they? We the fucking sheep. They're, they're being led around by their nose ring by the, the you know, the the lamestream media. You know. Uh, with all these things, it don't really matter shit in their fucking life. <laughs> you know, we're going to be doing this in the fucking uh, 10 second, second ex increments, I think, here. Or is it excrements? I can't re fucking remember. But my brain was my brain was pretty good for chapter 10. Uh, I did that all in one shot. That wasn't really me. That was that was Toto. I can't even remember what the fuck I'm looking for. Hang on a second. Uh, 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 I'll be right back. Uh, yeah, I think we'll be doing like one second excrements here. I think Max Harp, Max Headroom was a harbinger of our fucking future. I could be a fucking god. Once, once I got my attention span down the... Uh, down below that, a max headroom. I could be, I could be a, a, a digital age Marshall McLuhan incarnate god. I believe, I believe that's pop hell. I might as well start that damn religion now, cause my my attention span's getting down below, uh, below one second excrements. Uh, I have no idea what I'm saying. I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> I'll be right. <sighs> anyway, conspiracy theorist. Now, now, I always build myself as the world's lamest conspiracy theorist. And the reason I did that was because I, I'm always forgetting my tinfoil fucking hat. I mean, what kind of conspiracy theorist don't have his tinfoil hat? within reach at any point in time. Anyway, that's what makes me the world's lamest conspiracy theorist. Now, the first-hand accounts are the best. They mean something. Like Jesse Ventura, all his conspiracy, you got this conspiracy uh, theory show, man. It's, it's a damn good show. But you know what rings truest is his personal experience when he's talking about being the governor of a fucking state. This is, this is one of the big guys, right? One of the guys that's running things. He's the governor of the fucking state, and he's talking about his, you know, initial meeting, you know, where they, they fill him on, you know, all about this shit about being governor of the state. And there's a couple guys in this room that he asks through the air and say, you're not allowed to know. <laughs> you're just the damn governor. Governor, you think you're running things around here? There's two guys in this room. You can't know who they are. It's none of your damn business. You're just the damn governor. Now go out there and try and pretend to run it. Well, now, now I alluded to this in the in Web World in the magical circle of Unix. But uh, I alluded to this. But you know, what if there's gonna, a conspiracy so fucking big that no one will ever fucking believe? Who do you tell? There's nobody to tell. See, this is a problem with a lot of the conspiracy theory people, is that they expect people to believe them. 
just like those guys in prison are really innocent. Now, now I can tell you, that most of the people in prison, they, they caught what they done or what they were accused of done. I mean, I had one fellow says, you know, I'm, I'm in prison for something I didn't do. Is I didn't get away. <laughs> but you get these guys... And they got this glazed look. Put your hand for they they won't like run your hand hand in front of them. They won't they got this glazed look, they gotta tell you about how they're innocent. And you know they are, because they got the look, man. And they just wanna tell somebody. And it always turns out that, yeah, that see, now these are the guys who are doing twenty fucking years or forty years or a hundred years. And the reason they're doing that time is cause they didn't plead out because they were innocent. I'm going to get a fucking trial here. Yeah, I'm going to, this is America. I'm going to get a trial. Now they're doing 20, 40, 100 years, and they're like this. They're glazed. And they got to tell somebody. And they're saying, please believe me, but you do. Because they're telling us straight, this is a personal experience. And it's a little different when you tell a personal experience. Kind of like Jesse. Jesse and them two guys that were apparently connected to the people who really run the fucking country. I mean, screw the governors. <laughs> The president and the senators and all these, these, these two guys are obviously connected to the people who really run the goddamn country. Anyway, fucking lost my train of thought again. But it's longer than one second, so I'm not a god yet. <laughs> okay. Anyway, MK Ultra. Who are you going to tell if you're one of these mind, mind bot people from MK fucking Ultra? Well, no, but I talk, the first person I ever told anything about that, Linda Lou Reed. I told them when I knew they were listening because a guy came came to fix the phone when the phone hadn't been reported, broken. He came to fix it just the same way he was dressed. He was dressed with a, he had like a Panama hat and a gold chain and a, and a shirt. I think he was an undercover cocaine dealer, so, so to speak. He didn't have... Time to dress between gigs, I don't fucking know. Anyway, he came to fix the phone. I told Linda Lou this and now next thing you know she's she's taking a lot of Prozac and convinced they're all watching her. Uh which they were, as a matter of fact. <laughs> but <laughs> just because you're paranoid don't mean they ain't they ain't watching you, I'll tell you that. And you can tell a lot about a paranoid person by following them around you can. Anyway, uh, uh, discombobulation. I, I got to reach for the discombobulation uh, accessory here. Hang on, just a second while I I take care of discombobulation business. Oh fuck! I always I always hit the wrong goddamn button. <laughs> anyway, I mean the story everybody knows about MK Ultra is that uh, well, the government, the government. The government, I mean the one we elect, not the real government. <laughs> you know, Congress and Senate, these assholes, they, they, they find out about MK Ultra and mine experiments and, and, and he's, 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 uh, them experimenting on, on their own goddamn Department of Defense people, you know, using acid. And, uh, one of them killed an elephant with acid, LSD. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like I lost the train of thought again, but <laughs> yeah, nobody been messing with my brain, nobody at all. Anyway, so Congress or whoever tells the CIA and the Defense Department, you got to shut down this MK Ultra. This is bullshit, man. This is this is illegal, unconstitutional, blah blah blah. Well. CIA, they didn't shut it down. They, they moved it to other places like Canada. All of a sudden, Canadian scientists start getting all these grants. <laughs> now, here's an interesting thing. Abram Hoffer. Now, see, I'm schizophrenic. I know because I took the hoffer Osman diagnostic test. It, it, this boy is schizophrenic, of course. Now, it diagnoses everybody's got anything wrong with them as being schizophrenic. It's kind of a wide range in diagnosis, and this so they can treat as many people as possible. Now, 
Abram Hoffer, he, he, treated, he treated schizophrenia with, with vitamins. Now, he got a $60,000 grant <laughs> from, from the U.S. government, from the MK Ultra people, CIA, to do this in Weyburn, Saskatchewan. Now, can you say the word placeable? <laughs> now, here's a guy got this goddamn system of curing people with vitamins. And it's, it's a new range, so it sounds pretty fucking good. Except, what's the CIA's interest in? They got, they, got a, they got a placebo group to study and to do things to. Now, see, if, if you got AIDS, you got AIDS, you go to a clinic and say, okay, we're gonna, we want you to be part of this test. You're gonna be in the placebo group. We got these new drugs, we think could cure AIDS in five, 10 minutes. We want, want you to be part of the placebo group. Well, yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. No, they're gonna say, we got these vitamins. <laughs> you got AIDS, we got, we got some vitamin C, extra heavy dose of vitamin C, we think that'll take care. Uh, see, they used to do that just to black people in Mississippi or Tuscogee or where the fuck ever. Okay, we got our syphilis, we got our placebo group. We just give them a lot of tender love and care and see how that works out for them. Now, Abram Hoffer, man, I need a drink just to tell you this. Now, now Abra, Abram Hopper, his, his right-hand woman, and there's no sexual innuendo intended there, was, was, was a, uh, a nurse from uh, the Royal Canadian Navy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, now, now Hopper is German, we know, we know, we know a lot of these MK Ultra people were, well, German war criminals. And, and the Canadian Navy, along with the U.S. Navy, I mean, there's the OSS and all their secret intelligence shit, and they let, ran a lot of this MK Ultra stuff. Well, now, but, but Hoffer's a Canadian born in Hoffer, Saskatchewan. Well, uh, you know, had big connections, the University of Saskatoon and Saskatchewan and degrees and shit. And, but in the old days, they, they, uh, they created these people. They didn't, they didn't do a lot of paperwork. Now, I went and I checked out a few things, like for a birth certificate. I checked out. I, I went to the University of Saskatchewan myself, and right there in Saskatoon. I, I checked out some of the it, But there seemed to be people with degrees, but no, no history. Degrees, but no history. I know about this myself, having a degree from Western New Mexico University, or the University of Western New Mexico. Yes, West, yeah, Western New Mexico University. I mean, the reason I can't get it right is even though I got a, I've got a, uh, an MBA from that school, there's, you can look it up. I was on the dean's list. I, I got my degree, but, uh, and they send me alumni shit. I get the cups and the mugs and the t-shirts for the gold Mustangs, yeah. But you won't find any record of me actually taking any classes there. No, you won't. I got what's known as a 10 minute degree. Well, well, a lot of the early MK, you know, ultra, these, 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 these German Nazi war criminals, they got the same kind of history as I do at Western New Mexico University gold Mustangs. Is, uh, if you actually dig in there, they're, uh, their past is a little bit shallow. Could you say what I mean? Kind of like, kind of like Obama's boy saying, "What do you mean they want to see the birth certificate? They want to see one? Well, goddamn, we better make one." <laughs> but we we all know, we all know Obama was born in Canada. <laughs> Saskatoon, probably, probably the son of one of them German war criminals. Anyway, so you got your MK Ultra fucking people. Now, 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 Hopper, Hopper, he sends me to see a doctor named Fogel. 
Now it wasn't Sidney Sidney Fogel. Sidney Fogel's the MK Ultra guy who who uh, killed the elephant with acid, I believe. <laughs> hey, Mr. Elephant, you want to get high? So we, the world's first hippie hippie elephant, and sure enough, it, he proved drugs are dangerous because he died from that LSD they gave him. Anyway, it was a different Fogel, and he's a hypnotist. Now. <clears throat> A lot of these people have, uh, you know, people people have been subjected to mind control and all this. They uh, they have things come out over long periods of time, and they're never really sure themselves. And it sounds like a strange story even to them. Well, to me, it's a little bit different. See, uh, I I I didn't mind going to see this hypnotist. I didn't mind at all. Doctor Pogel, the fucking hypnotist. It wasn't Sydney. He never killed nobody with acid, so he could hypnotize me. But I didn't like the idea of that thing and not remembering what went in while you was under. That kind of terrified me, unreasonably, you might you might say. But I made myself a little self-hypnosis tape. Before I went, I played it for like two weeks, day and fucking night. A little self-hypnosis kind of constant reminder just said over and over again, you will remember. It doesn't matter what they say, what they have to say, you will remember when you wake up. You remember everything that went on. You will remember. You will remember. Well, I remember. <laughs> and you know I'm telling the truth when I when I need a little a little bite of the fucking dog here. Hang on. Ah, fuck! God damn, I'll get this right some fucking day. I used to have a brain. Mm. Now, uh, now after that hypnosis session, they, now they suggested some things during that hypnosis. You, I mean, the Manchurian candidate, I mean, now, I gotta tell you, every time I see a red queen when we're playing cards, I killed somebody sitting at the poker. Ah, okay, I'm just kidding about that, but yeah, I, I, I got the gifts. I remembered. I remembered everything. Bright as fucking day. I remembered what they did with me while I was under hypnosis from Dr. Fogel. <laughs> Close associate of a German war criminal that ran a placebo group for the CIA's MK Ultra. Now Hoffer's, see, you gotta really see Hoffer's uh, head nurse, his right hand woman, she was one of them Navy people. I already told you that, my brain's going, Bubba. Anyway, I got the trigger words. They gave me a pretty good fucking guess to what I should do in the future. Uh, and their auto suggestion, let me tell you, it covered a lot of ground. <laughs> It pretty much covered, uh, don't worry about having a conscience or <laughs> any ethics or any basic sense of humanity. You just, you just do it. And, and I, I had contact with other people. See, I, I uh, uh, the, the Russian and, and, and the, 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 the American and Canadian intelligence service is real hot on this, uh, Psychic shit. Besides the mind bot shit, they were doing this psychic shit at the time. And I was, I was, I was a member of the Bartonian Metaphysical Society. Later taught for the Institute of Applied Metaphysics as well. And a lot of these people, well, Yvonne, Yvonne Grandma, her name is now, I guess. But Yvonne, she's a good Ukrainian girl who, who married one of the one of the head guys. I, there shouldn't be a lot of people in the in the metaphysical society that kind of came in from the outside. And, Became high up in there who were, well, Levon's husband was a member of uh, Air Force, military intelligence. <laughs> now, a lot of these people got little offers to go participate down around Ottawa in these little experiments. And they came back, they was never the same, and they had these kind of memories. Well, they weren't quite memories, they were kind of like missing memories. I got a feeling something is going on. Now, 
Yeah, I, I've experienced a little bit of that myself. Uh, yeah, that comes with another fucking story. I don't hardly believe myself, but that's because I, I was kind of out for part of it myself. Anyway, uh, I'm saying something I have no fucking idea of. No, I believe, I believe my brain is far enough gone, there's nothing left for it. Closing out chapter 11, a space alien is hiding my drugs for half-naked people, except maybe for you to watch me drool on myself and pee my pants, which you can't actually do because I ain't wearing my, you don't want to look down there. I ain't actually wearing any, so. So I'm just going to kind of fade out back into the fucking bottle and, uh, uh, there's nothing left to say, Bubba. You can watch me pee and drool on myself all you fucking want. Maybe that'll give you a little hint about what your fucking future is going to be all about. Okay. Okay. And speaking of discombobulation, let's jump the track and maybe the shark. Continuation and order and logic are highly overrated. But let's, let's talk about Alex Jones. You know, uh, got one of his websites, he got the name for me, uh, that one's like Prison Planet, and whatever, he's, he's, one of the, he's one of the big fucking conspiracy theorists now, he, he kind of, kind of, sort of the problem with conspiracy theory is it's, it's proven right too soon in real life all the time. Now, Alex Jones, how do we know he's not actually on the government fucking payroll, on the secret government payroll, and his job is to put this shit in your face. Remind you, you can't do shit about it. Maybe he's actually a government fucking worker. And for all this goddamn revealing all the shit, maybe it's kind of like, kind of like when, when they stop telling good lies, you know, like when Clinton says, well, I, I smoked marijuana once, but I didn't inhale. They just kind of rub it in, telling you, you can't, what are you going to do about it? You know, I'm a lying cocksucker. What are you going to do? Nothing. Maybe Alex Jones actually a government agent put out there to rub your face in it. Well, the thing is, it don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter. If Alex Jones is pure of fucking heart, believes wholeheartedly in everything he's saying, is trying to warn you. So you do something. It don't matter if it's that or he's a government agent. His job is trying to rub your face and go, ah, look what we're doing. We're fucking you here. We're fucking you there. You're totally fucking screwed. We're screwing you every day in every way. And I'm here to laugh at you and point it out. Because we have a good time. We have, we're going to go home and have drinks after they say, we told them another way we're screwing them. And they ain't going to do nothing. See, it don't matter. If Alex Jones is pure heart, a dreary rat fucker, he's bringing a lot of information. you got to use your brain, son. You gotta use your brain. It don't matter what Alex Jones is doing. You take a look at what he's putting out there and the reality he's showing you and the proof and the fucking facts and you use your brain. <laughs> you don't say, well, Alex Jones is pure heart. I'm going to go out and, and start a fucking revolution. And you don't say, well, Alex Jones told me there's no hope. I mean, look at that video where he's talking about people letting, let them and their families and their children get groped to see the sporting event. He's practically crying. He's going, he's, if this is close I ever seen him to cracking up, he's going, what the fuck are you people doing? I thought he was going to have a mental fucking breakdown because he couldn't believe it. We got a whole goddamn nation lining up to have all the fucking, you know, their right to privacy violated, their bodies violated. To see a Spartan event. <laughs> Is there, now that's the closest I've ever seen where he believes himself. Personally, there's no hope for this fucking country. Oh, yeah. I want to I want to see the ball game. Oh, you, you got to grow up my kid? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, grow up a little cut. Yeah, make sure you get a hand up there under her patties as long as I get in to see this game. Anyway, it don't matter whether Alex is pure fucking hard or dirty rat bastard. You got to think. You got to think about what I'm telling you. You gotta think about what Jesse Ventura is telling you. And, and you gotta look, and, and, and the surest sign somebody's telling you the truth is when they get that, they get, look, 
Because they're telling you the truth, but they don't really quite believe it themselves, or they don't want to believe it themselves. And this is why I got no fucking problem. No fucking problem at all. Well, then anybody says, I don't want to believe any of the shit. I'm going to go hide my head in the sand and pretend that, pretend it ain't happening and just go watch my team play after I let them grow up my little girl. Just pretend everything's right with the world and nothing's going on. I understand that. I got no problem with anybody who wants to fucking stick their head in the sand and never do nothing, taking the ass day after day. I mean, what's that uh, Stockholm Syndrome? We got a whole nation of Stockholm Syndrome, Stockholm Syndrome victims. And you don't beat those people that had Stockholm Syndrome. You don't say, I'm going to punch your lat silly because, you know, after all the torture and the... <laughs> be terrified that all that you came to love your captors. See, full moon just went down, yeah. Anyway, I told maybe three people about the MK Ultra thing because who, who the fuck are you going to tell them? Why are you going to tell them? Well, nowadays, uh, some people might believe you. Mostly it's used to debunk people. True fucking stories. Everybody, everybody acts like they got the list. Oh, MK Ultra, that's bullshit. Everybody acts like they got a list of the people that, that MK Ultra fucked with, whose minds they fucked with. <laughs> Who they perform bizarre experiments on? They act like they got a, no, sir. I checked my list. You're not on it. You're full of shit. Well, I think there's more people keeping them tinfoil hats handy than ever fucking before. And still, there's a lot of see. There's a lot of weird shit out there. It's like uh, uh, anytime you you can tell anytime somebody comes up to the a real conspiracy theory that hits the, go the secret government a little too close to home because all of a sudden a bunch of their agents jump in and come up with totally unbelievable fucking conspiracy theories. Like It's kind of like the health things. I had this health thing for getting rid of uh, kidney stones. And I was reading some of these and, and well, lemon juice, this and that. But there's one guy... <laughs> He had this thing on the internet, get, how to get rid of kidney stones. Turns out you get, get in a, a lukewarm bath and you eat two watermelons and you just pee, pee in the bath. Right? You don't get out of it. You just eat them watermelons. Stay in there eating the watermelons. And I realized this is a shit disturbing. This side guy so jumped in. They got some of these people. They got, they got your lemon juice theory, blah, blah, which are reasonable or unreasonable. But this guy was flat out shit disturber. He said, I know how to get people to sit in a bathtub and pee on themselves. <laughs> and I I didn't try that one. I imagine a whole lot of people done that, though. Anyway, it's, it's getting too fucking random and discombobulated even for a man without a mind. So hang on a second. I, I might have something to say before I go. I may not. But we have to consult with our little friend down there.